everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Building Dynamic Web Apps with Laura Bell. My name is Eric O'Young. I'm a sophomore uh, studying social studies uh, with a secondary in computer science. Uh, and I live in Adams House here at Harvard. Um, so Laravel, at its most core, is a MVC web app framework. Um, so like what you guys have been doing with CS50 Finance, um, uh, Laravel is a framework that allows you to build dynamic web apps. Um, so you can think of it in some senses as an extension of uh, the type of stuff you've been doing in CS50 Finance, but uh, a system that's a lot more robust. Uh, a lot more, um, I think, elegant in some senses, uh, and provides a lot of functionality for you to build fairly complex uh, web applications. Um, so let's go through some of the key features, and then uh, we'll sort of dive into an example of building a, a blog application with Laravel. Um, so one of the first things that sort of uh, differentiates it from the MVC type of work that you've been doing with CS50 is uh, it includes a ORM engine. Uh, so ORM starts, uh, stands for Object Relational Mapping. Um, so this allows you to build in a layer of abstraction between the database and uh, your controllers. So unlike in CS50 Finance where you directly make queries, uh, the ORM la uh, layer allows you to abstract that away and create models that are more powerful than you can directly with SQL queries. Another thing that's really helpful is inheritable templates. Um, so you'll notice in CS50 Finance, um, you, you end up rewriting a lot of things where places you could potentially reuse things, uh, you're not able to. So here in, in Laravel, you can use what's known as the Blade Template Engine to create a master layout. And from there, you can inherit so that sub-templates can actually uh, include elements within that larger base template. Migration. So this is a fairly standard feature on most modern um, web application frameworks. Uh, so this allows you to represent database schema changes in code. So without going to, say, PHP MyAdmin, you can actually create these migrations um, where you represent the database schema changes in code directly. Um, and this allows you to, especially if you're, you have multiple people working on the same web application, that you can uh, sort of track these changes, say, in GitHub or some other repository. Uh, so this is really helpful um, and sort of uh, uh, mitigates the need to, say, pass around a lot of SQL dumps. Um, and finally, Composer is something really, really useful that allows you to use other people's code to do awesome things. So uh, Laravel is structured as several Composer packages. So say if you wanted to bring in a authentication package or if you wanted to bring in um, some sort of generator script or, or an admin interface, you can sort of plug and play those components with Composer. Um, so let's get started. Any questions from you guys before, before you get started? No questions? Cool. Um, so sort of the first step is installing Composer. So Composer allows you to uh, manage these dependencies, whether it's the Laravel framework or some other third-party extension. Um, the first command allows you to download Composer, and the second command allows you to move it into your um, uh, local bin folder so that you can uh, run Composer directly through the terminal. Um, after that, um, go ahead and create a new Laravel project. Uh, we're actually going to use some example code that I've put together uh, to create this blog. Uh, but if you're sort of starting from scratch, uh, you would use this, this command up here, Composer create project. Laravel slash Laravel, and then the name of your project. Uh, and that will sort of include all the distribution code for starting a new Laravel project. So for your CS50 final projects, uh, you'll, you'll probably want to use that command. Um, but we're going to start with this. So once you've done that, you're going to get a uh, fairly extensive number of files um, in blog 50. Uh, so let's just go through some of these components. Um, you'll notice at this root directory, uh, there is a app folder. Inside of the app folder, there's a couple, couple helpful folders. Um, sort of of note to start with is this config folder. Um, so this sort of sets up how your web application is going to, say, authenticate people or cache things or connect to the database. Um, and what's really helpful is that Laravel allows you to set up different development environments. 
So what we've done here is if we go under the local folder, uh, there's a database.php file. And you'll notice here that we set up a MySQL connection that allows uh, individuals to connect to the MySQL server that's directly on the CS50 appliance. Uh, and we're connecting to a database that I set up called Log50. So let's actually go ahead and run the working version of this just to get a sense of what the application that we're building looks like. Um, so I have a copy of this Blog50 completed. Um, so Laravel actually has built in a, um, a server that, allow, that you can run directly from the command line. So this is similar to the piece that before when you actually built your own server in C. Um, so they have one built in so that you can run your Laravel apps directly from the command line. Um, so if we do PHP artisan uh, serve, uh, this will launch a development server on port 8000. 8, so if we go to localhost 8000, um, you'll notice that, hey, we have our blog up and running. Um, so Laravel here is generating the front page of our blog. A very simple application, but uh, there's a couple really nifty features that it provides underneath the hood. Um, so the, the block application is straightforward. If we wanted to create a post, we can click on that button. We can say, um, hey, everyone, this is a really fun seminar, uh, for example, and write something down here, text here. If we click Submit, uh, you'll notice that our new blog post has been added to the front page of the blog. Um, you go back here, you'll notice that there have been a lot of some comments already on the blog. Um, so if we scroll down, you'll notice that Jonathan Tan says that he was very intrigued by this post. Um, so we'll, we'll sort of go into how object relational mapping allows you to do these relations uh, in a fairly seamless way as well. Cool. Any questions about functionality of what we're going to build? So let's start out with actually creating the database tables. So recall that in CS50 Finance, you put together a table for the users as well as for the stocks in your portfolio. So as we mentioned earlier, what we use in um, Laravel is something known as migrations. So if we go back to the distribution code here, um, sort of the first command that is helpful that Laravel provides you is this uh, migrate command. So we can do PHP artisan migrate make. So this allows us to create a migration. And then we'll want to create a migration called create posts table, uh, which is going to be where we're going to be storing our blog posts. And you'll notice here that it runs through some code that actually generates a file uh, with a timestamp on it. So if we go and look at database, we'll notice under migrations that it's created a blank file for us, which has some boilerplate code um, with the name that we specified create post table. It has two functions in it. Up is what we want to run when the uh, migration is applied to the database. And down is what we're going to do uh, when we want to reverse the migration. So here, let's start out with writing this migration. So we, there's, a, there's a helpful class in Laravel called schema. So we're going to run schema create. We're going to create a table called posts. And here we apply this using a function. And within here, we're going to actually specify the contents of our table. Uh, we're going to create a ID, uh, which is auto incrementing. Uh, in addition, sorry. In addition, we're going to create a field that represents the title of our blog post. We're also going to create a field for storing the text of our blog post. And finally, we're going to store uh, some timestamps for when our post was created and when it was updated. And for down, it's fairly simple. All we want to do is drop. Uh, the table that we've created. Great. Any questions? So now if we go ahead and here, let me actually localhost, let me 
delete what we had earlier. Crimson. Go to databases. I'm going to delete what we had earlier. Drop this. And create a new database blog 50. So now sort of the magical part is here that we can apply these migrations directly to the database using the command line tool. So if we do PHP artisan migrate, you'll notice that, hey, it's created the migration table, which we'll take a look at in a bit. And it's run, applied this first migration. So if we look at blog 50, you'll notice that it's created two tables for us. Uh, first is this migrations table. So if we browse this, you'll notice that this table is fairly straightforward. It just said that, hey, we've applied this migration. If we go back and look at posts, you'll notice that the structure is exactly what we had asked it. Uh, we have an auto-incrementing ID. We have a string for storing the title and a text field for storing the content. Great. Cool. Any questions about how migrations work, how we can apply them? Nope. Cool. So now we're going to go ahead and actually create the model. Uh, so we want to create a posts model uh, that stores uh, sort of an abstraction of the database. So rather than doing MySQL queries dir uh, directly, uh, we're going to use this. Um, we're going to create. So we have to create a folder in here uh, called models. And inside here, we're going to create a file called post.php. Um, inside this PHP file, uh, we're going to create a class post which extends uh, Eloquent. Uh, Eloquent is the name of the uh, uh, ORM engine that Laravel provides. And in here, uh, we might expect that you actually need to write some code. Uh, we're going to write some helper functions later. But sort of out of the box, this will already recognize what's in the database. And we can access, say, the text uh, uh, of our blog post or the title and create stuff directly with uh, pretty much no code whatsoever. Um, so that's sort of one of the magical components. And the, when, once this, uh, uh, this class is sort of more fully fledged, we'll include information about what it's related to, so the comments. Um, also create a function so we can actually directly get the URL of a blog post page. Cool. Any questions about that? <coughs> nope. Cool. So now, once we have our model, we want to create a controller that's able to interface with these models and subsequently the database. So if we take a look at blog controller, um, you'll notice that there's not much here right now. Um, all there is is an index uh, function that sort of generates a home page, but without anything uh, there to display yet. So the first fir function that we're going to create is one that allows us to uh, create a blog post. Um, so we're going to declare a new function called new post. And inside here, simply, we're going to set the layout of this page uh, to be a uh, sort of rendered version, if you can recall from CS50, of this template called blog.new, which we're going to create in a little bit. You'll notice here on line 6 that we've specified uh, this variable, layout. And if we take a look at the views folder, there is a layouts folder, which includes sort of a very basic HTML file. And of note, you'll notice that we have this container here that yields content. So inside of our uh, template, what we're going to do is create uh, what's going to be substituted directly within this layout. So we said that we want to render a template uh, called blog.new. But inside of blog, there's not yet this uh, new template. So we're going to create a file called new.blade.php. This tells Laravel that uh, this PHP file should be rendered with the blade template engine. So this is a fairly straightforward uh, file. It's going to be the form by which we actually add in a blog post. So the magic here from the inheritance is that, hey, we want to specify that uh, the section, the content section here, uh, which is delimited by at section and at stop. So what's in between here is going to be substituted into uh, the, the master layout. 
And here what we want to do is very simply create uh, a new HTML file. Uh, let's, let's just add a quick title, add a blog post. Um, and within it, we're going to create a form. Uh, this form is going to have uh, an action. Uh, and this is going to be something that we substitute in later, and we'll see sort of how routing fits into here. But we're just going to define for now um, that this goes to a URL uh, with the route from create post. And then this is going to have method post. And within here, uh, we're going to have two, two fields. Uh, div class form group. Uh, we're using the Bootstrap uh, CSS library graciously provided by Twitter. So we're going to create two of these. So this first uh, first input is going to be the title. So input name, title, class form control, uh, type text. We're going to add a placeholder. And then the second one is going to be a text area. Name content, class form control, control, um, and placeholder holder right here. There we go. Finally, we're going to add a quick submit button type. Submit uh, class button button primary. Uh, so these are all sort of features of Bootstrap so that this can be laid out in a way that's um, sort of pretty to the user rather than sort of naked HTML. So we've defined uh, the controller here. We've defined a very simple view. Uh, but what's sort of missing is the connective tissue. Um, so at this point, Laravel has no idea how we're going to actually access uh, this controller. So this is defined in a file called roots.php. And right now we have one root, uh, which is when we go to uh, the home uh, path for this website is going to render the, uh, the index controller. So here what we need to do is implement a new root for this, uh, for us to create a post. So we use this method uh, get, which specifies that when a user um, tries to get this page, that uh, the specifically the post slash new page. Um, what we're going to do is uh, use the controller called blog blog controller uh, new post, the one that we just created, and then we're going to sort of alias it as new post. So now you'll notice that this new post right here corresponds with directly this. Um, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to create we're gonna create another function in a little bit, but uh, what's sort of here under the key as is what we can sort of substitute um, within our uh, blade templates. So for now, let's actually also say a root. So we're also going to create a uh, controller so that we can create these posts. So if a user posts to the page uh, post slash new, what we're going to do is uses a controller that we're going to create shortly called um, blog controller at create post. And we're going to alias this with as create post. Cool. Any questions? Cool. So let's run what we have so far. So if we do PHP artisan uh, serve. We will see lots of errors. So it looks like we have a syntax error on roots line 27. Ah, missing a semicolon. Cool. So if we go to sorry, 1000, uh, you'll see nothing here yet. Uh, so this is sort of the default home page. But if we go to post slash new, hey, it will be the form that we just created. Um, Right now, we haven't implemented the functionality of when we press the Submit button. So if we click on the Submit button, it's going to run an error. But we're, we're going to code that right now, precisely what we want to do when a user submits this form. So let's do that. Go back to the controllers file. 
um, what we're going to do is implement this new function that allows us to create create a post. Declare a new function, uh, public function create post. And this function is going to be a little bit more sophisticated than what we had before. But you'll see here that we're not going to actually write any SQL. Uh, the ORM, the, the eloquent ORM, is going to allow us to um, do this in, uh, in some ways, a more elegant way. So we're going to create a new post. Um, and here we're instantiating uh, a new object uh, uh, from the model uh, that we just created, the post model. And what we're going to do is set the title attribute of this using uh, something that we get from uh, the server. So this is similar to what we had before in CS50 Finance, where we would do uh, using the super global post uh, looking for title. Um, so the Laravel provides some sanitation and whatnot using this helper function. So we would prefer to use this instead of this very basic raw form from PHP. And then what we're going to do is set the content of it to input get content. Um, we're actually going to wrap this in a helpful function that PHP provides called nl2br, which turns new lines, nls, into brs, breaks, so that we can actually have different paragraphs within it. And finally, what we're going to do is save this post. So we call the function save on this model. We're going to save the post. And finally, what we're going to do is redirect the user, uh, specifically to the root, which we're going to create shortly, uh, alias by view post. And we're going to pass in the arguments ID being the ID of this new post. Great. So now if we actually go and run this, we're going to add a new post. Uh, let's say uh, this is Seminar 50. Uh, and say, sure, ASDF, whatever, some sort of content. And submit it. And we'll notice that, hey, root's, root's not defined. But if we take a look at PHP my admin and look for whether or not uh, our function did anything, look at blog 50, posts, uh, we'll notice that, hey, in fact, we did just create that blog post. Um, with the timestamps as specified. So now let's go back and actually create this, uh, this, this other function in our controller, specifically the view post controller. So public function view post. So here, what we'll do, instead of having empty parentheses, we'll want to pass in the ID of the post that we're creating. And from here, what we're going to do is actually query the database for it. So if we do post, there's a function called find that allows us to query it by ID. Um, specifically, actually, we're going to use an alternate version of this called find or fail, uh, which allows us to uh, sort of uh, quit out of this function, so throw an exception um, if, uh, if the ID we pass in uh, does not exist. And then what we're going to do is something similar to what we did earlier where we set the content of this page to be uh, the rendered version of this new view, which we're going to create, blog.view. And we're going to pass into it, just like in the CS50 render function, uh, a dictionary of, uh, of variables, where these become uh, the keys of this associative array become variables within the template. So we're going to do post, post. Uh, so pass in directly the post that we've, we've queried from the database. Now what we're going to do is create this view so that we can actually view the blog posts that we've built. So we're going to create a file called view.blade.php. So inside of this, uh, this template, what we're going to do is um, put together a simple page that allows us to display uh, display the content. So we do section, as before, content, uh, stop. And what we're going to do within here is create a, some, write some HTML to display this page. 
Um, so we're going to wrap it with a fancy new um, HTML5 element called article. And in here, we're going to have a header where we're going to simply have an H1, uh, which includes the post title. So here, if we look at this sort of double, uh, double curly brace notation, this will do essentially PHP echo uh, post title. So it's a helpful shorthand that um, Laravel provides us. So we're going to use this, uh, this notation instead. And here, we're going to also print out the content of it. And in here, we're going to do post content. And down at the bottom, what we're going to do is create a footer. And in the footer, uh, we're going to first display uh, when this was posted. So this was posted at, created at. And Laravel uses a really nice um, uh, date library called Carbon. Uh, so we can actually do something called diff for humans, which you saw earlier when we posted it, it'll say like five seconds ago. Um, so this is, this is a really nice functionality of Laravel. And finally, we're going to close this footer. So now if we go back to the home page, uh, we're going to see nothing here yet because we haven't coded up the home page. But if we go to post slash one, um, we're going to see an exception. Does anyone know why we see an exception? What are we missing? Any ideas? So what did we do earlier for us to actually define how we get to particular controllers? The route? Yeah. So we still have to define the root. So if we go back here to roots.php, you'll notice that we haven't actually defined how we're going to get to this controller. Um, so now we're going to define this root. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, similar to what we did earlier. But we're, we're going to notice here is that we're, we're going to uh, have like a placeholder. So if we do root.get slash post ID. So ID now is what's going to be passed into the controller. Um, this is going to use. Um, the controller that we just created, uh, blog controller at view post. And we're going to alias this as view post. Missing a. Sorry. Great. So now we're going to create this route. So now if we go here and refresh this page, uh, we in fact do have our new blog post. So this is what we created earlier. Uh, very simple, uh, very simple page, but displays the blog post that we just created. Cool. And if we actually go through the whole process of creating a new blog post, we'll notice that everything redirects properly. Uh, if I say, "Hi, I'm Jonathan Tan," uh, say this is my blog post, and submit it. This will create this new blog post with ID 2, uh, which increments from what we had previously um, and, and displays it properly. Awesome. Any questions? Yes? Does Laravel handle standardization and everything for you? Yes. So when we saw earlier when we did input colon colon um, uh, get, that, that sort of sanitates uh, any sort of SQL injections and whatnot that we might want to perform uh, if we're a malicious user of the website. So Laravel handles a lot of that behind the scenes. Good question. So let's take a look at the home page. So if we first go back to the controller for the home page, you'll notice that it doesn't do much here. You'll notice that we're not passing into this controller anything particularly helpful. Um, it's just this uh, index file. So let's pass into this something helpful. And specifically, we're going to pass in posts. And Laravel allows us to do uh, posts uh, all, which will allow us to get all the posts. Now if we go back to index.php, you'll see, hey, nothing here yet. But we want, what we want to do here is actually iterate through, uh, do a for each loop over the posts that allows us to print out the posts. So for each uh, posts as posts, what we want to do is print out the content of 
the blog post. But one thing what you'll notice is that we actually wrote most of that code already in view.blade.php. So what we're going to actually do is use a nice helpful feature of Blade and factor out this common code. So we go here. Uh, we're going to take this content right here. What we're going to do is create a new folder. Uh, let's just call it partials. And in here, we're going to create a post.blade.php. So here, we factored out the, uh, the way in which we want to display these posts. And here, uh, what we'll do instead of actually uh, having that HTML directly, we're going to use this directive called include blog.partials.post. And what we're going to do here is pass in the post of the page. So now if we go back here, we'll notice that the, the functionality is still the same, but now we have this factored out code, this HTML. So we can use it in index. So here, this is very straightforward. All we do is we do include blog.partials.post an array. And similar to before, we do post, post. So now if we go back to the home page, we'll see that, hey, we have a list of all the blog posts that we had before. Um, we might want to add some if conditions and else conditions so that if we don't have anything on the blog, we want to display something helpful like, hey, uh, there is no content yet on the blog. And if you guys actually look at the distribution code on GitHub, uh, you'll, you'll see an example of how we do that. Cool. Any questions? Yes? I guess just like a fundamental question. Um, back at the route, all mm -hmm. right, um, if we take a look at routes, um, where does the uses.blog controller at create post, what does that direct us to? Or what exactly is yeah, that? Yeah. So taking a look, say, for example, this route right here, mm -hmm. uh, the first part is the actual URL that the user will go to. Mm -hmm. And this array here, associate array, defines how we want to uh, have the application act in response to it. So uses is the uh, controller, the function that we want to call when a user goes to this URL. So view post right here was a function that we defined inside a blog controller so that we can actually render a view, perform some calculations, uh, interact with the SQL database. Okay. And then the other part, as, is an alias that we use. So if we notice when we created the form, uh, you'll notice that URL colon colon root create post. So it substitutes in the actual URL so that we're not hard coding these in. So we can change it once. Uh, say if we wanted to rename instead of uh, post slash new, we want to do like p slash new just to uh, just to clean up our URLs a bit. Uh, we would change it in one spot rather than across all the different files. Cool, that's good. So now we have a very basic uh, blog blog platform. We probably want to add in a, a button so that we can actually create new posts. Um, so if we take a look at the layout master. Um, we have a section called header right that we've just defined up at the top so we can add buttons to the top of the header. So if we go to view dot, uh, if we go to index.blade.php, actually do is define what goes inside of here. So this header right section, uh, what we're going to do is add in a button to go to the URL defined by the root uh, new post. Uh, just to clean it up and make it pretty and all bootstrap, uh, we're going to make this a default button. Uh, let's just make it large for fun. Um, inside it, we could put some text, but uh, what bootstrap provides is glyphcons. So we can actually add in uh, that nice pencil that we saw earlier. Um, glyph icon, glyph icon dash pencil. Um, so this will allow us to put in an icon instead of um, instead of text. Now if we do stop, this will define this new section. And hey, we have a nice button that links us directly to the add a blog post page. So we have a fairly simple blog. We can like add stuff to it. Um, but what we sort of generally expect from blogs is commenting. 
So it's really important for us to have, say, if someone else visits a website and really likes a post, that they can engage in discussion with other people who visit the page. So we're going to go and create a new database table and a new model so that we can associate comments with posts. So the first step, just like before, is that we need to run a migration. So like before, we do uh, PHP artisan, migrate make. We're going to create one called create comments table. This will create a file uh, that has our new migration. And we're going to, like before, uh, define a new, new table. So schema, create a table called comments. Uh, we're going to this function here. And inside this table, what we're going to do is first, like before, have assign an ID, increments ID. We're going to set a allow users to uh, associate their name with a particular comment. Uh, we're going to have some content that goes along with this text content. Um, and here what we're going to do is something different. We're going to create an integer, 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 that's called post ID, um, which is going to signify how we want to um, sort of what, co what post a particular comment goes with. In addition, we're actually going to set a foreign key constraint on this. So MySQL will enforce that. Uh, we're not trying to assign comment number 5 to post 5,000 if we haven't had 5,000 posts on it. So we do here, we do foreign uh, post ID is going to be associated with Uh, the ID field from the table posts. And we're actually do something else helpful is on delete. So if we delete some post from, uh, from, from the database, that we want to cascade the deletes for comments as well. Because it's not very helpful for us to have comments on posts that don't exist. And finally, like before, we're going to set some timestamps on this. Uh, and like before, we're going to have the sort of reverse migration be uh, dropping the comments table. So now if we go back to here, we're going to run this migration, artisan migrate. And now it's applied to this migration that we just created. So if we take a look at PHP my admin. We do in fact now have a comments table that has the structure that we just specified. So like before, we're going to create create a new model to sort of abstract the, the SQL table that we just created. So let's add a new file. We're going to call it comment.php. And this is actually going to be fairly straightforward um, with a slight change from what we had before. So class comment extends eloquent. And we're going to do here is use a um, define a function that is the relationship with other models. So we're going to have a post function here that returns uh, this, this relationship. So we're specifying that this belongs to post, seeing that there is, is one post that this comment belongs to. Um, this actually has to be capital P for the model. And now on the other flip side, we have to say that, hey, posts have comments. So what we're going to do is define public function comments. And here is return this uh, has many comment. So now, sort of magically, when we have a post, we can get the attribute comments, and it will populate it with the information from the database. So let's actually go through and add a new feature to our uh, view file so that we can uh, both display and create comments. Let's post. 
So we're going to define a new section. Let's just separate it with a horizontal rule. Section ID equals comments. What we're going to do here is, like before, iterate through all the comments. So actually how we do this is, uh, as I mentioned, fairly magical. We do post comments. And then we can sort of uh, do this for each loop over each of the comments. And what we're going to do is div class comment, and we're going to actually print out this comment. Uh, so display that, hey, comment name, the person who posted this comment says, dot, dot, dot. Uh, we're going to put this in a block quote just to make it look nice. And then comment content block quote. And for each. So now this is going to loop through all the comments that is associated with each of the posts and uh, display each of those comments. I'm going to add another section down here, which allows us to add a comment. So H3 class, let's put a title here, uh, add a comment. Uh, and we're going to define a new form. So like before, we're going to do form action. And here, the new action is we're going to define a new controller that allows us to uh, respond to post requests for creating comments. So URL root create comment. I'm going to pass in the uh, parameter here, the ID of the post that we're creating comment on. And then the method of this form is going to be post. Now we're going to add in a uh, two fields, form group. Uh, this is going to be an input with the name, name, uh, class form control, uh, type text, uh, and with the placeholder, your name. We're also going to define another form, form field. Uh, which is going to be a text area as we had before. Uh, just like before, I call it content, class form control, uh, placeholder right here. And just so that we can actually submit it, submit type. And class button, button primary. Close the form, close the section. So now, if we refresh this page where we have, um, say, a particular post, uh, we have to reboot the server. PHP artisan serve. Reboot this. Um, we have to define the root, but for now, let's, uh, let's just take this out so that we can actually show you what the page looks like, and then we'll actually create that root. So hey, we have, uh, have this new form down here uh, so that we can create uh, comments. So let's actually define a function within the controller so that we can add comments. Let's go back and within uh, blog controller.php. What we're going to do is create a new function called create comment. Public function, create comment. This is going to have a single parameter, the ID of the post that we're commenting on. And like before, we're going to first get the post. So post, find or fail, ID. And afterwards, uh, we're going to create a new comment. So comment equals new comment. Comment name equals input get name. Comment content equals uh, the same new line into breaks of input get content. And finally, we're going to have to associate this comment with the post. So we're going to use this function comments that allows us to save this relationship. So now this comment will have automatically the post 
ID. Uh, we could sort of also set it manually, but this sort of is more uh, sort of easy to read as far as the function goes. And after sort of we perform this, what we want to do is redirect the user to the route specified by view post with the array uh, with the parameter of the post ID. And now so that this actually functions, we need to define this route in our root post. Uh, and now we're going to call this post slash ID slash comment. Array uses the new function that we just created, blog controller, create comment as create comment. Great. So now hopefully if we refresh this page and add in a comment, um, say David Malin, uh, hopefully this works. Submit. We do in fact have a comment on this blog post. Cool. So now we have a fairly functional blog post. Um, and we're just going to add a couple tweaks so that um, we, we have uh, some more useful information on these posts. So if we go back to the front page, uh, we have no sense of how many uh, uh, comments are on each of these, um, these posts. So what we're actually going to do is inside our model, define a helper function that allows us to specify the number of posts that go along with a particular, uh, sorry, the number of comments that go with a particular post. So you're going to create a helper function, public function, uh, get num comments uh, stir. So a string that specifies the number of comments that go along with it. And what we're going to do is say that num equals this comments. So we're going to count the number of comments. And if this number equals 1, uh, we're just going to return uh, one comment. Uh, and then otherwise, we want to return the concatenation of num and comments. So we get the pluralization correct. Uh, let me just make this a single quote. One comment. And now we can use this function directly inside of our view. So if we go back to the partial post that we created, now we want to actually uh, display the number of comments. So what we can do is post, use this function that we just created to display the number of comments. So if we now refresh, uh, it does in fact display the number of comments that go along with it. If we wanted to be fancy, if you actually look at the distribution code, uh, we can actually link this to the comments. If you, if you recall, we defined um, within, the, within the view that uh, this has section ID comments. So if we actually wanted to uh, link directly to the comment section, uh, what we would do here is a href uh, URL of the root view post, pass in the array ID of post ID. And then we want to go to specifically the comment section. Here, let's close the A tag. So now if we refresh this page, we click on this, we'll go directly to the comment section. If we had a longer post, you could actually see this bounce down. But you'll notice that it's not at the uh, top of the page. Cool. Great. So that's that's a fairly straightforward example uh, of something simple that you can do with Laravel. But you can notice here that we've done a lot of things uh, with fairly uh, little amount of code. Laravel allows us to do the SQL queries behind the scenes. It does the sanitation for us behind the scenes. Allows us to do these relationships very easily uh, without us needing to do any SQL join joint statements to, to combine comments with, with the posts. Um, allows us to do this uh, inheritance of templates so that we can define sort of these nesting, uh, nesting files uh, so, so we're not repeating ourselves. Um, just like when we had that display of the blog post that we don't have to copy and paste the code. Um, 
And from here, you can build increasingly complicated uh, applications. You can imagine if we wanted to implement login, we could we could say bring bring in a third party um, uh, framework that allows us to do that. There's a bunch of them that are really really great that can do like password recovery, and it'll send you like a reset password email. Um, we can implement permissions so that um, I can create a post, but someone else can't edit it. Uh, we can we can implement functionality to delete posts. Um, but you can see here that we have pretty much all the rudimentary components to, to build some really, really dynamic and exciting web apps. So with that, um, I think we're good. If any, do you guys have any questions? Yes? How do you handle static content? Static content. So uh, you saw before that when we had um, this right here, this layout content, view, dot, ma uh, view make, we had this without this array afterwards. So if we had a particular uh, file when blog dot, uh, sorry, wrong function, uh, blog dot index, we had this as just a static file. So if we don't pass anything along to it, it'll just render the HTML directly. But if we have um, uh, sort of pass in this associative array of posts, which is dynamically pulled from the database, uh, we can make, make the page dynamic. Cool. Any other questions? How would you compare Laravel to maybe some other options? Sure, yeah. So Laravel is, um, this, that's a great question, is one of like many options for web frameworks. So um, Ruby on Rails is one that's uh, popular. Um, I believe Twitter used to be implemented with Ruby on Rails. I think they've since switched. Um, there, there's another one called Fuel PHP. Um, so Ruby on Rails uses the Ruby language uh, and implements a lot of the MVC uh, stuff that we see here. Um, Fuel PHP is another PHP framework. Um, Django is, is one of my favorites. is a web framework for Python. So you can write your, uh, your, your web app in Python. Um, so there's a ton of these options. Um, Laravel, I think, by, by and large, is my favorite right now for PHP just because of the components that we talked about earlier. It's composer enabled uh, and includes a really, really expressive ORM system. Also has a really awesome templating language that some of the others just don't provide. And migrations. Migrations are awesome as well. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching the seminar. And good luck on your final projects. <laughs>